Okay, hello space fans, and you join me here at Mocha Chica, which is my mocked up version of Boca Chica. I've done that using the Kerbal Constructs mod. Since we were last here, I've added an enormous water tower to kind of represent the OLIT. Uh, it doesn't function, but I wanted there something there for the size of it. And here's our lovely Starship Super Heavy stack. I've had to modify the Super Heavy with square grids, no longer offset by 90 degrees, and I have removed the legs which has left 29 raptors completely exposed like that, which you might recognize from some of the uh, the pictures from Musk. Now the chopsticks, I've had to locate the chopsticks over here uh, because KSP does not let me locate the chopsticks on the OLIT. It won't let you launch uh, two vehicles next to each other. And this is a vehicle as demonstrated, look, it has moving parts. I didn't move very quickly, but those are the chopsticks. You may notice many, many struts on here. There's mech jeb for the, for the uh, control and you may notice that the arms are tilted back. Each one of those modifications was earned through terrible, terrible tragedy. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I've, I've been trying this for a while, but uh, I think I am finally there. So here's our glorious full stack. I'm just going to position the camera like this so we can see what height the engines are at. Mech Jeb is going to deal with the ascent. Um, but I'm going to run a script that will stage early because we want to preserve some fuel in Super Heavy and this script will then also take control of Super Heavy and hopefully guide it all the way back to our catch tower. Uh, okay, so I'll leave that up there. Uh, let's hit mech jab. Bam, right, okay. Engines are spooling up, it takes a while and I want you to keep an eye on the propellant here, which is 100%, now it's going down. Clamps are still in place, propellant's going down below 1%. Clamps are finally released. Now the engines are at full power. We're not clear of the clamps yet. We're finally clear of the clamps. We've burned over two and a half percent just to get clear of the clamps. That is uh, many tons of fuel being burned, like a hundred tons of fuel just to get clear of the clamps. And this is the tyranny of the rocket equation. The amount of fuel you have to expend very close to the surface because at this point the vehicle is still extremely heavy. Uh, and how much is it going to take us before we clear the tower? Clear the tower about just over seven and a half percent. So that's something like 300 tonnes of fuel we've expended just to lift the entire vehicle by a couple of hundred metres. Of course, it's not really that, you know, I couldn't build a hill and that was 200 metres high and put it up on top and, and save that fuel. What you're really buying with uh, all of this energy that you're, you're expending is uh, your airspeed, which at the moment is still quite slow, we're at 44 metres a second. But we're going to keep accelerating, the vehicle will keep getting lighter, so our acceleration will increase. Uh, and, you know, and that's what you have to do, that's the only way we have to get, uh, to get vehicles into space, is to use chemical rocketry, which is just the, the volumes of fuel you have to use uh, when you're close to the ground. It just, just uh, by ratio, immense compared to what you use uh, when you're much higher up in the atmosphere. Uh, so the general idea behind what I'm doing is, um, you know, obviously I'm a SpaceX fan. I mean, I'm a space fan in, to in, in total, but the things SpaceX are doing are, are just incredible. I'm addicted to uh, Texas tank watching. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, I'm using the game KSP, which I assume you're all familiar with. Uh, this isn't vanilla, obviously. I've heavily modded it. I've looked for any mods that, uh, you know, give me some kind of realism that I can add on. Uh, so I've got realism overhaul, um, real solar system, uh, Ferrams aero, I can't remember the name of the mod. Uh, but yeah, the, I mean, uh, uh, aerodynamics play a huge part in, in, in the challenge that, uh, that I'm trying to overcome today. So, you know, I've got aerodynamics mods, I've got, in fact, I'm listing all of the mods in, uh, in the description, so you can read them there. But yeah, the idea is I give myself as, as realistic and effectively as difficult a simulation as possible, and then I try and solve that problem using automation. I, I use automation in my day job, uh, but this is much more fun. <laughs> um, so I'm using a mod called uh, COS, Kerbal Operating System, and I'm using that uh, to control the Super Heavy and I'm going to try and catch it. Oh, I'm not using COS to control the chopsticks, I'm doing that by pressing the number one when I'm on the on the crane because it has a single action and that toggles the opening and closing of those chopsticks. Um, so, well, we spent a third of our fuel now and we're travelling at 220 metres a second. 
by the time we get to staging, we'll have spent what eighty percent of our fuel. We'll be travelling well over one point two kilometres an hour, uh, kilometres per second. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean the speeds are incredible when, when, when you get to space. They're just, uh, you know, too much to think about. Um, so I think what I might do for the moment is I'll just fast forward this until we get closer to staging because uh, this is nothing much is going to happen here. We're just going to ascend, and it might be nice to see it. A slightly elevated race anyway. In fact, if you look at the seconds on my simulation up in the, the top left-hand corner, you'll see that, uh, in fact, I've sped it up by, what, two and a half times, and it's almost kind of normal speed. I, I couldn't say for sure if uh, exactly what speed it would be. Uh, like I say, it's all an approximation. And the ascent profile as well, I can't tell if this is the ascent profile that SpaceX will use. I mean, it's, a sen it's an ascent profile I've, I've picked based on, uh, you know, trying to get things working, basically. Uh, but it's not so insane. I'm going for, you can see it up here, 200, 200. So a circular orbit, uh, 200 kilometers in altitude. The Inspiration4 mission, which launched recently, that had a starting altitude of, of 200 kilometers. Um, so, you know, it's quite a nice ascent profile. Um, and, and from there, you can just raise your orbit quite easily if you need to. Uh, so yeah, look at the vehicle. Lovely, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous, look at that. So much of it covered in that thermal protection system, the uh, the hexagonal heat tiles. I'll slow it down now. I think that's like, going to be like the biggest heat shield ever flown in space. Heat shields normally uh, are much, much smaller. They're, they're normally really the diameter of the rocket. Uh, I, I know, I, in fact, the space shuttle obviously had one like this, but um, uh, that never worked very well. <laughs> okay, so we've separated. We've now become two independent vehicles. Uh, both vehicles capable of landing themselves, uh, we hope, anyway, and I'm going to use a bit of camera trickery here to get a split screen view because I'm going to have to switch the main game over to Super Heavy uh, once the engines start firing, otherwise the script stops working if I'm not following it. So I'll switch over, but we've still got that live view of the Starship there, and that's going to continue on up into orbit. Uh, so now, Super Heavy is performing what it calls the boost back where it's effectively it's trying to reduce the velocity that's traveling away from the pad and reverse it so it's coming all the way back. Now I have to say it's terribly, terribly wasteful. Uh, I've, I've had what, something like 840 meters a second of horizontal velocity, which I'm now trying to reduce. Well, we're down to 600 now. I'm just burning all this fuel. I mean, we had 18% and I think we're gonna have, you know, like 10% less than that, or, you know, about 8% when we finish. That all feels wasted. If I was catching this on a barge out at sea, which obviously SpaceX can do, uh, then we could save a significant portion of that. All right, so let's look at the map view and see what's going on. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, there's there's Starship carrying on on its way into space. Um, there's Starship, this super heavy. This pink line is my trajectory, which, um, which I'm trying to get to land here. Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to nullify the velocity, and then uh, then I'm going to try aiming, and then I'm going to calculate how fast I need to be moving while I'm aiming at uh, the crane in order that I probably fall on top of it. So you can see now that I've um, nullified my velocity away from it, now I need to worry about the angle. I'm not pointing towards it, so uh, I'm gonna come down to five engines. As you can see, I was doing nine. Now on five engines for a bit more fine control, we're gonna angle the craft to try and uh, bullseye that pad. Um, so there's, there's the, the vehicle turning, and if we look, you can see that's affecting the angle. And now I'm calculating the target surface velocity. I want to be traveling about 322 meters a second when I switch the engines off. 323. This is changing as I, as I, as I slightly drift. Um, and this is just a, a, a normal trajectory calculation from, uh, from my Apogee there. Uh, but I've given it like an extra 700 meters because there'll be drag and I'm not going to bother calculating the drag. And the difference won't matter too much anyway because as I'm falling the vehicle will, will twist and turn to try and affect uh, its direction. Look at that, so Starship just exiting the atmosphere, I mean, at least at least in game it looks like it. We're going to hit an ap uh, apogee of about 92 kilometers. Starship's just crossed the Kármán line, and we've hit our we've hit our target speed, so we're now weightless, we're in freefall. Uh, this is real, you know, billionaire suborbital territory. We're going to go up to, what, 92 kilometers? So I guess Branson would say Super Heavy has been to space, and Bezos dispute that. <laughs> but we've got a lovely view up here. Uh, in fact, if I just pause the video, I can show you. Yeah, we can see all the way to Oklahoma City. There's Houston on the coast. Let's have a look around. 
Uh, that was Google Earth overlaid. Oh, look, look, here's Venus. Look at that. Maybe you couldn't actually see Venus from the ground because it's already set by this time of day. It's kind of late afternoon in May 2022. But up here we can see it and it will set again as we uh, as we descend. And over here, over here we've got Mexico and I'll do a similar thing. Let's, uh, let's put Google Earth here and see what we're looking at. Look at that. And right in the distance you can see Mexico City. So, uh, yeah, glorious view. Oklahoma City to Mexico City, that's over a thousand miles. Uh, yeah, so a fantastic view from up here. This is, you know, this is what your quarter of a million would buy you in a, in a Bezos or a Branson ship. So for now, we want to look at here. This is where the base is. This is where Boca Chica is. We're going to try and fall back here. In fact, our trajectory is taking us here. We've got no control at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to target the, uh, the tower. Uh, we don't need to do that for the script, but uh, it'll be useful because I can show you vectors on the uh, on the nav ball as we're coming down to try and uh, talk you through what, what's happening with the ship. Um, that little grey, there we go. So this little green box, that's our tower. These little grey boxes, that's actually where we launched from, so you can see they're very close to each other. Uh, but yeah, what we're still 90 kilometers up, we're falling at about 150 meters a second. Starship is still accelerating into orbit. I think we're just going to fall for a bit. So uh, I'm just going to speed it up just for a bit. Just if we get down a bit further. So yeah, here's where you enjoy weightlessness, the view. Try not to think about how difficult it might be not to crash. Because I have to say, I've launched at least a hundred and uh, most of them have not ended well. So Starship itself is just about to reach orbit, I think. It's firing pretty much horizontally. I think it's probably about there. We'll see the camera angle change slightly when it when it hits orbit. There we go. The Starship has reached orbit. Uh, and I'm just going to bring up some fuel properties that we can look at in a bit. Uh, but let's land the, uh, the Super Heavy first. So the Super Heavy, you can see the grid fins turning there. I've ordered the grid fins to orient the, the uh, spacecraft in a retrograde position, which should point the engines at the ground, basically. But until now, we're just entering the, the thicker parts of the atmosphere. It's not been able to do it, but it's now finally managing to raise the craft. And now here, these are the vectors I wanted to show you. Um, this orange vector, that's where the craft is pointing. Yellow vector is where is the direction in which the craft is moving. And the pink dot there is the crane. Uh, it, it's actually not quite like that. Let's bring it down to, to normal speed because we're going feet first. So uh, everything we're being shown is kind of in reverse. These are actually the inverse vectors. But it's, it's the same deal. If that yellow circle was on top of the pink dot, we'd be traveling towards the crane, which is what we want. So I'm doing an entry burn now. This is quite a low entry burn when compared to the Falcon 9. The Falcon 9 does its entry burn a lot higher than this, but I'm basing all of my decisions on, uh, you know, the available mechanics in the game. Uh, so if I don't do an entry burn here, it gets destroyed by atmospheric forces uh, as, as we re-enter, which we are about to do. Now for the next phase of the flight, I'm going to try and lean the, uh, the vehicle to try and drag this yellow circle on top of the pink dot. I, I don't have great control. I'm using the hot gas thrusters, but there's still a lot of oscillation. So I still find myself wandering from side to side. Lovely re-entry effects now. Uh, this doesn't need a thermal protection system, the Super Heavy. The stainless steel should be enough to protect it from these heats at these speeds. Uh, so it's it's actually, you know, a lot less energy being dissipated when the Starship re-enters. I'm calculating a suicide burn here. This calculation is changing as the ship slows, but now when it hits, now the engine should fire. It took a while to spool up, so I had to factor that in as well. But here they are about to fire. And that's increasing our Gs. Look, our Gs have gone up to, what, 7, 7.2 Gs. That would be very unpleasant if you were a person on board. But of course, this is unmanned. Um, and now I'm, I'm turning and twisting. I'm trying to, with the engines going, uh, the orange should push the yellow vector away from it while the engines are firing. So now I'm trying to push the yellow vector on top of the pink dot. I've still got this oscillation problem. So I'm doing it to some extent. But not perfectly, but we're definitely getting closer. 
uh, our, this vector angle we're about four degrees off which is a bit of a shame it's coming down slightly but yeah yeah we're about four degrees off and every time I've flown this vehicle it seems to essentially list to the same side it makes me think the vehicle itself has you know a built-in imbalance which uh, which I need to cope with so we're still over 200 meters a second coming down it's still quite fast we definitely pancake if we hit at this speed uh, we're firing nine engines still to try and reduce our speed uh, but we are balancing our throttle. The throttle isn't 100% now, so we've obviously got the speed under control. Here's the long view. There's the crane. It's looking okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not close enough. I'm not close enough. And this is this is gutting because I, I've missed by a few meters. And what's going to have to happen is I've got no option. I'm going to have to burn fuel and hover and kind of slide sideways. So I've moved to the crane now because I have to be controlling the crane in order to hit the one. And we'll just watch this as it hovers and burns fuel and wastes fuel. What, we're on 3% propellant? I mean, that will be enough to get us there, but this speaks of how much fuel I could save if it was more accurate. We just missed the end of that chopstick. There's pad approach up here. It should say pad descent when it's happy and it's going to lower itself into the chopstick, so we're waiting for that. Pad descent, here we go. Okay, so now it's going to lower itself into the chopsticks. It's so slow, and I move further towards it. <laughs> it's doing, it's doing it slowly. It's doing it slowly. I mean, it's difficult to watch. I should probably use the RCS more effectively. I'm just leaning it. Okay, and I'm going to close the chopsticks now because the chopsticks will help guide it into position. There you go. They made contact on one side. They'll actually push it into position as it comes down. It just needs to control its vertical speed now. If the engine's cut out now, we'd still be ruined. It would still destroy the crane. Uh, it has to lower itself into those arms very, very gently because it's very heavy and uh, uh, KSP will not forgive you. But it looks good. It looks good. It looks good. There you go. So we're in and the engines will switch off when they detect that the motion's arrested. The grid fins straighten. We're down. We're safe. <laughs> and we've achieved it. We've, we've, uh, we've done what? Many people thought SpaceX were joking about. We have caught an orbital class rocket with chopsticks. And there it is. What a gorgeous sight. OK, so now that we've done that, how much fuel did we actually get into orbit? Let's switch back to the Starship and check. Let's have a look at the fuel. OK, so here we go. Here's our Starship in orbit. Uh, it got to orbit a long time before the landing, funny enough, which seems counterintuitive. Here is how much fuel we had left. We've got four tanks. We've got oxygen and methane uh, in the in the main section, and we've got oxygen and methane header tanks. And between them, we've got about 137 tonnes of propellant, which is about 8.5% full. Um, and this is a tanker. I've, I've, I've made the tankers with about 1,600 tonnes initially. And I think the crew dragon, uh, no, the crew starship, sorry, has about 1400. Um, but, you know, these are rough ballpark figures. So the way this will work going forward is um, I, I think SpaceX will launch a tanker just like this, just like we've seen. And then they'll launch other tankers to come and refuel this one. So they get a second tanker up here with 137 tons of fuel on. Uh, it's going to have to rendezvous. It's going to have to dock and then it's going to have to land itself. So it's not going to be able to transfer all the fuel. It's going to be able to transfer, I don't know, say 80 or 90 tonnes. But of course, I can get that up. I can get more fuel into orbit if I make a number of uh, efficiency improvements in landing the Super Heavy or even in having a, a tower that's capable of catching the Super Heavy on a barge at sea. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to continue this now. My aim is to get to Mars, uh, just like SpaceX and Elon want. I'm, I'm going to try and get a Starship and land it on Mars uh, using a lot of automation and uh, and not losing any hardware. Safely landing every single vehicle involved, landing every Super Heavy from a launch, landing every Starship fuel tanker uh, from a, re a refuel mission and safely landing the Starship crew on Mars. So I reckon it's going to be orbital rendezvous and docking next. All right, space fans, my name is Real Time Spaceman, and I'm signing off. Goodbye.